on five engaging digital icebreakers for back to school. Um, I'm Doug Cavalich with McGraw Hill Education, and I will be the moderator for today's session. Uh, before we get started, though, I just want to go over a few quick housekeeping items. Uh, as you know, the webinar is being presented in listen-only mode, which means you guys are all muted. Um, uh, but uh, we do still want you to participate through questions and through polling. Um, so Jenny's able to hear you, but um, or you're able to hear Jenny, but she won't be able to hear you through the webinar. Um, so if you look at your toolbar, there's an area for questions, and then there's an area that will pop up for polls when it comes time for that. So feel free to send us your feedback, send us your questions during the session. Joining us today is Jenny Magira, the Digital Learning Coordinator for the Academy of Urban School Leadership, a network of 29 neighborhood Chicago public schools. Um, previously, Jenny was a fourth and fifth grade math teacher and math technology coach in Chicago public schools. Her education includes a BA in psychology and history from Columbia University, as well as an MST in mathematics education from the University of Chicago or University of Illinois in Chicago. And some of her accolades include Apple Distinguished Educator, Google Certified Teacher, and Chicago Public Schools 2012 Tech Innovator of the Year. Um, we're honored to have Jenny uh, for another one of our sessions. And here she is. All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, today, uh, I, thanks again. I see some familiar names. So thanks for those of you who've been following on this webinar journey um, together. We had one of these last week, and we have another one next Wednesday. So I'm um, glad to see that I haven't scared you away yet. Um, but today, we're here to talk about um, how to use technology to do back-to-school activities. Um, coming from the classroom, I had lots of different ways that I would get my kids ready for school. And um, when I ended up bringing iPads into my classroom and then working with teachers who brought in Chromebooks and laptops, and all sorts of digital tools. Um, how we you know, ask ourselves, how can we both get our kids acclimated to our new school year, but also give them the opportunity to get familiar with these devices? So um, we're going to share five ideas. I have a little bonus idea, so we'll say 5.5 um, for you, for those of you who want to stick till the end. Um, and uh, this is being recorded, so if anything goes kind of fast or you need to uh, check it again, you are more than welcome to check the recording and see it later. So again, my name is Jenny McGarra. That's my Twitter handle down there if you want to connect. Um, some of the ideas that we have um, will involve connecting, so I'm happy to be one of the connections should you need for your kids. And with that, let's dig right in. So the first thing that I want to do is do a poll. I just want to see kind of who's here today and find out what grades you teach. That's going to help me think about what kinds of examples to give to you as we talk through these five uh, digital icebreakers and also to help uh, you know who else is in this virtual room. So I'm going to go ahead and start that poll. You can see that there's a couple choices. So go ahead and pick um, one of the following. Um, are you kindergarten through second grade? Are you third through fifth grade? Uh, sixth through eighth grade? Um, high school, ninth through twelfth grade? Or are you coach or administrator? So I see that's still kind of going on. See about 92, 93% have voted. Wow, we have a really active group. Thanks, guys. No, sometimes I think that we've got people watching the webinar and it's just like minimized in the background, but you guys are really here. That's awesome. We'll leave it up just for a few more moments in case people are coming back from another screen. Um, again, just trying to see what grades people are coming in from. All right. So, um, okay, I think we're going to just go ahead and stop it there. So here are the results. You can see that the majority of you are high school teachers, which is surprising. That's awesome to know. Um, I love to see lots of high school teachers on, and so we'll definitely make sure that uh, the ideas that we share today have a little bit of a high school spin as well. And then um, you can see that the other majority is kind of from the intermediate middle grades, so three, five, six, eight. Not a ton of primary teachers, but we've got some in here. So hello, primary, and uh, a small handful of coaches and administrators. So thank you guys so much for taking that poll. For those of you who are just joining us, don't worry you didn't miss any. We just were trying to take a quick poll to see what grades people teach so that we could check out um, how I can support you better as we explore these big ideas. So 
So I'm going to go ahead and hide these results. And um, hopefully you guys should be seeing my screen again. And so um, now that I know what grades you teach, um, I just want to think about what we do when we have our students come back to school. What are the different ways that we welcome them back into our classrooms? So one age-old question that we ask students when they come back, whether they are in kindergarten or graduate students, is what did you do this summer? And you know, obviously the, the answers can change and the responses can change. Um, and sometimes it's a very boring exercise and sometimes it's a really engaging way for students to share their personal journeys and ventures um, that they had while they weren't with you. So um, that's one thing that we always see. Another one that um, we often see as back to school questions are what are your goals for the year? So, you know, you're coming back for a new year again, whether you're coming back for second grade or for 12th grade, what do you hope to accomplish this year as a student? So, um, targeting, a lot of times people have them do it on post-it notes or index cards or they write themselves a letter. Another thing that we often see people do as a back-to-school activity are discussions, uh, where they might interview another student or turn to a neighbor and talk. Um, in elementary, they call it sharing. Um, I know that some high school teachers use that strategy as well, but kind of interviewing a colleague or talking to someone um, else to kind of learn what they were doing. And then there's the orientation. So they come back to your classroom or they're coming to your classroom for the first time and you're trying to get them acclimated to your expectations, your routines, your rules. Uh, maybe you're developing rules with the classroom and you're helping um, set expectations as a team and helping students to understand um, how to treat not only each other with respect but the uh, culture and environment of your classroom both physically um, and also culturally. And then finally, there's the time capsule. And I've seen this done a lot of really amazing ways where teachers have students write letters to themselves, uh, maybe take some artifacts or some work from the very beginning of the year, and then throw it into a shoe box or something else, bury it or uh, metaphorically bury it by sticking it in a closet or someplace else in the room, um, and leaving it until kind of towards the end of the year where they can come back to it and see how much they've grown in the past several months. Um, and see if they're the same version of themselves as when they first joined your classroom. So there's, I'm sure there's many other ways that you welcome your students back to school, but these are five that I see happening in lots of different grade levels, um, despite you know, any developmental difference or so on. And, and you can see that many of you have A, probably done them, but B, um, have probably been doing them with analog tools, so construction paper, uh, loose leaf paper, uh, index cards, things like that. So what I'd like to do now is find out uh, what kinds of devices do you have in your classroom. So as we think how we're going to digitize some of these, uh, some of these activities and rethink them so that they might be more powerful with technology, I also want you to think um, what you actually have access to. So I'm going to throw another poll up there. I'm going to go ahead and launch it. So if you guys could just let me know what do you have available to you so I can make sure that I'm talking about all of the same devices that you have um, in your room. So iPads or tablets. iPads and tablets are both Android and iOS, so any kind of uh, tablet, touchscreen tablet. Chromebooks, netbooks, or laptops. Um, and then you can check them out or you don't have anything. All right, we've got about 91% of the votes in. We'll just give it another few moments. All right, I think we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and share the results with you. So you can see that the majority of folks on this, uh, on this webinar have um, a cart checkout system where they're able to check out devices from a cart rather than having devices in their own classroom. And then we have a pretty even split of iPads, tablets, and Chromebooks versus uh, Chromebooks and netbooks. So lots of different things. There are different activities that I'm going to share that work better with one device than another, and I'll talk about that. And we can also talk about ways for you to um, possibly um, to possibly modify some of these activities should you not have access to the same tools that I'm discussing. 
So the first activity that I want to explore is about orienting your students to your classroom. Uh, when I, I taught fourth and fifth grade for a very long time, and, um, and now I coach pre-K through 20, actually, so all grades. And one of the things that I see in every room is in the beginning of the year, we have our routines. We want our kids to know um, how we expect them to do things, whether it's from lining up to go to lunch for the little kids, or how to turn in assignments for the older kids, um, how discussion should work, how uh, going over a syllabus in high school. We want to go over all these expectations, and usually it's pretty didactic. The first uh, few weeks of school, or even a few days of school, depending on how quickly you can get through it, is a lot of here's how you do school. And so one of the things that I like to do at the beginning of the school year is something called a QR code scavenger hunt. Now, I'm sure many of you know what a QR code is, but for those of you who don't, um, it doesn't immediately stick out in your head, it's those uh, square barcodes or scanning codes that you see often on the back of products. Um, you'll see them in advertisements, on posters, on the back of a ketchup bottle. Uh, they're different um, codes that you can scan with any phone or tablet. And then when you scan it with a free app, it goes directly to either an image, a video, a website, um, it could even just go to a, a set of text. Um, so it's a quick and easy way to digitize the sharing of information. Now I've seen teachers do this in a really thoughtful way to help their students orient themselves with their classroom. So for example, uh, let's go ahead and try this ourselves. So I've got a Q, our free QR website here, qrcode.kwa. Dot com. It's Q-R-C-O-D-E dot K-Y-C, or I'm sorry, K-A-Y-W-A dot com. So this is a free QR code maker, so I'm going to go ahead and show that to you now. I really like this one because it's super simple to use. You can upgrade it um, and you know pay for it to have something called a dynamic QR code, which will change. Um, you can change the content of it so you don't have to reprint out a new QR code. But um, th there's nothing wrong with the free one. You don't really need to pay for, um, for a costly QR code. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to quickly go to, well, let's first do, um, we could do text. So what I could do is I want my students to scan um, different things in my classroom and uh, kind of get the understanding of maybe some expectations. So I might say when um, they scan the board, I could say, look here for daily um, assignments and homework. So I've selected text, so it gave me this text box, and then when I click Generate, Oops, where did the free go? There's a uh, free button, which I think I'm zoomed a little bit too out to see. Um, you can generate, oh, here it is. It just came up right here. Sorry, it took a minute to uh, load on my side. Um, then you can go ahead and take a picture of this. You can take a screenshot or pull it off, and you have the little QR code. And that guy can be printed and placed on the board. So I can have a QR code right there, and my students can walk up to it and scan it. And then when they scan it, they'll get this message, look here for daily assignments and homework. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what this looks like by using my iPad, which I have right here. And I'm going to use an app called Reflector. And what Reflector allows me to do is to use my iPad as, um, and mirror it to my computer screen so all of you, you can see what I'm doing. That way I'll have two devices going at once. And this is um, not too expensive. Reflector is about $20, and it works both for PC and for, um, and for Mac. All right, great. So I've got my reflector open here. See if it's going to work. It's always kind of hit or miss. Let's see. I've got this going. Let's try it. Oh, reflector. Let's try it one more time. I'm going to close this off and try it again. Here we go. All right. So I'm going to keep this from being full screen. And I can go ahead and you can see I have my iPad here on one side and my QR code on the other. I'm going to open up a scanning app. So I have scan right here. And you can see it's just like a, um, a photo, or I'm sorry, a picture. And I was just able to scan it. When I scan it, you can see it says, look here for daily assignments and homework. So let's go ahead and try another one. I'm going to put my iPad down. 
and I'm going to go ahead and create this time a URL. I'm going to have this go to McGraw Hill. Let's see, at McGraw Hill Education. Oh, don't tell, don't tell Doug. I don't know the actual website. Let's find out. He, even though he's listening, he knows. All right, it's mhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmhmh
nothing super uh, super great in terms of the video, just more of a visual aid. So sorry it didn't quite advance as well as I needed it to. So that was talking about orienting your kids with the classroom. Now let's talk about that age-old uh, activity of how was your summer? What did you do over summer break? And I think that people have been asking these kids as long as uh, asking kids this question as long as school has had summer break. It's a, an obvious and logical question to ask when you haven't seen your kids for three months. Um, but one of the things that I love to do is to do is something to do is something called, something called a great on any device: Chromebooks, iPads, Android tablets laptops, MacBooks, anything. So um, Padlet is a free service that you can get online. It is web-based, and it's a great way to have kids quickly respond and share their ideas. And we're going to interact in a Padlet chat right now. So let me show you how this works. All I need to do is go to Padlet.com, and then um, I can go ahead and Let's see here. On the top, oh, well, first I need to sign in. So I'm already signed in, so let me log out and show you what that looks like. So you can log in by creating your own account by clicking on sign up if you want to, or you can just tap sign up with Google or sign up with Facebook. I'm going to go ahead and sign up with my Google account because I'm already logged in. And that way I don't actually have to make up a new username and password that I have to remember, which is awesome. I hate making new usernames and passwords because I always forget them. And then all I need to do is uh, tap this little uh, plus sign on the top right corner, and I can create a new Padlet. And it's making a wall. So this is a, like a, a wall where we can share ideas. Now, I double-click anywhere to um, add a Padlet. So I can say Jenny at the top or a post title like uh, my summer. And then I could talk about my summer. It was so great. Um, oops. I... I ate lots of hot dogs and tacos. And I'm going to go ahead and snooze my hangout so that this doesn't keep coming up. I apologize for that. Um, so we can also add links. So I can add the URL of an image or video. So if I wanted to find maybe a picture of a taco, let's go ahead and pull a picture of a taco. And I just want to have... Um, that image, this is a nice free Wikipedia image of a taco. Um, I can throw that in there and add it so that I can have a picture of a taco. Um, and it just embeds right in there. I'm also able to upload something, so I can upload a file from my computer. And then finally, this last one is um, allowing me to take a picture of myself. So if I click Allow, and I allow it on my webcam, I could take a picture of me. Um, me. So, um, hello. Now the Padlet, um, you can either create this kind of Padlet where you have these little posties where people can do post-its, but I'm going to show you in a minute why um, that might not be the only way you want to do it. Now, to have other people communicate, all I need to do is share this link. Um, this link is kind of long, though. I don't want you to have to type it, so I'm going to make it a shortened URL. And so I'm going to make this a lot shorter than all of these characters. And so I'm going to go to a free URL shortener service called bit.ly. Bit.ly allows me to shorten the URL and give it the own, my own ending. So I'm going to paste that right in here. And now I can shorten it to McGraw-Hill Education, M-H-E, Padlets. So now all I need to do is give you this link, or I can just click Copy Bit Link. And I'm going to add a new slide in here. And if you guys on the, um, on the webinar go ahead to this uh, bit.ly, you're going to be able to have access to that uh, Padlet. And you can go ahead and start telling me how your summer was. So let's go ahead and do that now so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to make these letters a little bit different colors so it's easy to see. It is case sensitive, so make sure you use all lowercase letters. So it's bit.ly slash M-H-E for McGraw-Hill Education, Padlet, all one word. B-I-T dot L-Y slash M-H-E for McGraw-Hill Education, Padlet, M-H-E Padlet. And then once you get there, no matter what device you're on, just go ahead and double click anywhere on the screen and go ahead and start telling me how your summer's going. Um, if your summer's already over and you're back to school, tell me how your summer went. What was your favorite part? Um, this is just like what we'd be doing with our students. In a minute, I'm going to head back over that way so we can take a look and see what people are doing. I'm going to leave this up just for another minute so people um, can keep um, adding, adding their, uh, their little pieces to it. 
feel free to add pictures um, or links. If you started a new blog, add your link. People can follow you. Add your Twitter handle so people can connect. Lots of great things to do. All right, I'm going to head back over to the Padlet so we can see what people are doing. Wow, look at all of these great um, messages. So notice how people are kind of on top of each other. I can move them around, they can move them around, but sometimes for younger kids it gets kind of crazy. Um, it's also really fun to see how people um, are typing in it at once. It's almost like a Google Doc, so you can see um, they're slowly updating. If you watch, you can see that different uh, little Padlet um, cards are slowly adding more information. Oh, Jennifer got a puppy. Oh, Jennifer, add a picture of your puppy. Um, oh, yay! So um, here we have a friend. She's back to work. Oh, she has nice pretty hair. I wonder if she got a new haircut for back to school. She looks lovely. Um, oh, Emil, Emily is leaving for Cape Hatteras. Looks lovely. Oh, Linda's here from Hawaii. Hi, Linda. So she has her beautiful flowers. I think that's a hibiscus flower. Um, her summer is over, but she cleaned, read, and ate a lot. Those are good things. Um, oh, wow, Marla finished Oregon Math Readers. This is so fun. Marge did lots of gardening. Oh, Jane also took a lovely picture of herself as well. Oh, she's in Maine. Jane, I wonder um, if you had some blueberry ice cream. That's my favorite thing about the summers in Maine. Um, it looks like Carlos went to Florida. So this is just a ton of fun. Now, um, what I... What sometimes frustrates, again, the kids about this is how it goes over. So what you can do to change this view to make it a little bit easier, if you want to be a little bit more concrete sequential, is you can click on Modify this wall on the right, and then I can change the layout, which is the one, two, th third option down. So if I click on Layout, instead of Freeform, I can do a stream, which looks a little bit more like a Twitter chat, right, or a grid which puts them on. I like grid the most because I think it takes the most um, it, advantage of the screen. It, lets, it fills it all up. It's not just one stream. You can see everybody, but nobody's uh, work is on top of each other. However, some people really like Freeform because we could do things like this. I can move um, people by um, region. So I could, let's try that right now. So let's pretend that this entire board is the United States, okay? And what I'd like for you to do is this is California on this side. Um, Hawaii is all the way over here, so I stuck Linda all the way over here. Chicago's right in the middle, so I'm going to put my face right in the middle. New York's over here. Maine's up here. Go ahead and move your little card in the direction of where you are from. And let's see if we can kind of get a geographical uh, location here. So drag your card to where you live. So up here would be maybe Oregon. Linda's like uh, very at the edge of Hawaii. We've got Maine up here. Perfect, Jane. You got it. Um, Florida's down here. If you're from out of the country, you can maybe stick your card right here um, at the bottom. Awesome, McGraw Hill. Um, you guys are in Ohio. Let's put you in Ohio, right? Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> That's kind of sort of Ohio. Yep. All right. Yep, you're in Columbus. All right, Doug. So um, we've got him right here. Um, so we've got all of these great uh, people adding their padlets, and then I'm just going to go ahead and ruin all your movement by moving it back to, oops, by moving it back to um, the grid form, just again so you can compare and contrast. And I accidentally went off of it, so I'm going to go back. Here we go. Here we go. So I'm going to click on the spoke, and then I'm going to go to layout, and I'm going to go to grid. Yay! So we can see everyone's great work. So again, you can see how instant it is, how fast it is. It's a really fun way, and kids love playing with this. And again, you can do this with any age. Um, sometimes my graduate students are the ones who have the most fun. Um, you can see we're all you know, full-size grown folks, and we're having a great time. You can also change the wallpaper. So if you want to customize this for your classroom, you can see I can change it to bamboo or robots. City, I can add my own so I can have a big class picture of ourselves or a picture of science for science teachers, but you can definitely do a ton of great things for this. And then another thing I love about this is you have the ability to share it. So I can export the image or the PDF or even as an Excel or CSV file if I want to, a CSV is, a, is like an Excel file where I can just want all the text to print out or I, I can embed the entire Padlet into my class page if I want to save this, um, almost like a time capsule. 
Finally, speaking of QR codes, if it was too much for your students to type in the bit.ly and you didn't want to go to this website to create your shortened URL, you can just take this QR code down at the bottom and scan it and it will do the same thing. It will go to um, this, this uh, Padlet. So again, I'm just going to show you what that looks like. So I've got my scan app open here and I'm going to close out my last scan. I'm going to come over and scan, oops, and scan this QR code. Sorry, I keep pulling up this beautiful picture. Okay, so I'm going to move this one over, click on share, scan this QR code, and bam, now you can see on my iPad, it's taking me to the Padlet, and I'm able to participate as a student. Um, without having to type in the QR code. So that makes it really great uh, for students who might not have the most motor dexterity. Um, and then on the Padlet, instead of typing out their thinking, they can just take pictures. All right. Hope that was fun for you guys. I had a good time. <laughs> Let's go ahead and check really quickly and see if anyone has any questions about that. So I'm going to pop over to questions. So, um, Oh, so going back to the QR code, Susan was asking about URL and text on Kwa. Um, you can also do a few other things. So I'm just going to go back to Q, uh, QR code.kwa.com. So you can see that you can go directly to a Facebook um, app, into the Facebook app. You can add it to a contact. Like um, if I want a QR code on my business card, I can have it linked to my contact information, like a V card. I can have it linked to a phone number or a text message. Um, yes, I do have my project, the QR code project ideas listed on my website, which I shared, at, I will share again at the beginning, teaching like it's $29.99. If you search in the search box QR code, um, I do have the, um, some lessons about QR codes and how you can use them in class. I have a, several of them uh, right here. Um, let's see here. Oh, no. Um, Sarah's not getting the audio. Hopefully she can log back in and come back. Um, let's see. People are just kind of writing about where they're going into and what they were doing in their lives. Um, and yes, uh, Padlet works great with um, Padlet. The Padlet lasts, uh, I've never had them disappear, so, um, but I always do save them and archive them. Someone was asking how long the Padlet stays on the web website. All right, so um, hopefully I got most of your questions, but we're going to just go ahead and keep on cooking so we can get through the rest. We have three more digital learning ideas to dig into for back to school. So we've already looked at how we can orient ourselves in the classroom through QR codes, how we can leverage um, Padlet, which is a great free online tool to get the conversation going about what we did this summer. And now let's talk about goal setting. Um, we want our kids to be able to set goals for the school year and to think about how they're going to uh, be the best versions of themselves. And so I love using Google Drawing for this. It's an amazing tool and it's really underrated. Um, it's a great way for your kids to make an interactive goal setting chart about themselves. Um, so let's go ahead to Google Drawing, and we're going to keep modeling this, just like we've been modeling everything else. I'm going to go to Google Drive, and hopefully this server error goes away and we actually get into Drive. Fingers crossed. If not, we'll skip to another one and come back to this one. Maybe Google Drive will be back. Oh, yay, it's working. Okay, great. So I'm going to go ahead and click on New, um, and I'm going to go to More under the New button in Google Drive, and I'm going to click on Drawings. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a drawing about my goals. I'm going to go ahead and title it at the top. Instead of untitled drawing, I'll say Jenny's 2014-2015 school goals. Um, and I could do it very simply. I could go ahead and find pictures that represent my goals. So one of the things I want to do this year is remember to eat lunch. I forget to eat lunch every day at work. I always just running between different schools. I don't eat lunch. And then very unhealthily, I gorge when I get home, eat a huge dinner, and then eat all night long in the middle of the night. It's just bad. It's bad for my waistline and my heart. So I'm going to try and eat lunch. So I'm going to click on insert at the top. And then I'm going to go to image. Now, notice I don't have any pictures of lunch out. So at the bottom of the insert image window, I'm going to click on search. And I'm going to search lunch. Um, and you know what? These are yucky lunches. So I'm going to write lunch box because that might be more fun. 
Oh, that's great. So I've got, um, oh, you know what? I love Star Wars. I'm going to do a Star Wars lunchbox. Star Wars lunchbox. Yes. All right. Let's see if we can find one. Um, maybe they think this lunchbox is two words. We can do it. We can find a Star Wars lunchbox. Maybe not. That's okay. We'll just go back to lunchbox. We're taking too much time on this. I should have picked the first one. Sorry, guys. All right, so I'm just going to take this lunchbox. We can all pretend that Luke Skywalker is right there on it. Um, so it's generating. I can go ahead and um, make it smaller. And I can do one of two things. I can either add in my goal by adding a text box right here. And I can write, remember to eat more. Eat lunch every day. And I'm going to write, eat a healthy lunch every day. So I could put that here, or if I don't want text in there and I want an all visual, um, all visual drawing, I could click on it and add this, click this comment box, and I could add it as a comment. Remember to eat a healthy lunch every day. So that way, um, I still remember why I have it here, um, and when I click on it, it pops open the comment, so I know what that's for. So I can continue with that. I can even um, click up here on my line tool. And if I click this little arrow next to my line tool, I can make a scribble line. And I can kind of do an outline of my lunchbox to make it show, to show you how important I think it is to eat a healthy lunch. I can turn the line color um, a different color to make it pretty. Um, so I could do that kind of thing as well. Um, it makes it a little bit fun, almost like scrapbooking. But I'm going to delete all of this, and let's take it up another step. So instead of doing pictures of lunchboxes um, and things that I find on the internet, I'm going to click on image and I'm going to click take a snapshot. And this is going to access my camera's computer and so here I am. And I'm going to go ahead and take a snapshot of me um, holding up a few things. So I might hold up my cell phone and uh, I might have a bottle of water with me. I'm going to go ahead and do take a snapshot. Oof, that was awful. I'm going to try it again. So I'm going to hold up these two things. Okay, great. So I've got my, my cell phone, I've got my face, I'm going to use that one and select it. See, there it goes. So I've got my picture right here. Now here's what's really cool, you guys. So instead of um, just having this one uh, or all of those different images, I can make my goal setting be about me. So I'm personalizing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a shape. I'm going to add in a circle around my mouth, okay? And then I'm going to make that circle invisible by clicking on this little bucket. This bucket is the fill color, so you can see I can make it red or blue, but I'm going to make it transparent, which is invisible. And I'm going to make the line, you can see this line changes the line color. I, um, make the line blue, but I'm going to make that invisible too. So now I have this invisible circle right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the comment on that, and I'm going to write, um, use kind words to everyone in school. You know, so I might say, you know, maybe last year I wasn't very nice to my friend, so I'm going to click on that. Um, I'm going to do another invisible circle around my water bottle. So I'm going to make a circle and then make the fill and the line transparent. I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to say, um, drink lots of water every day. And then let's just do one more. I'm going to do another invisible circle on my eyes. Make them transparent. And then I'm going to click on this comment button. And I'm going to say, watch the teacher always um, when she's teaching. All right, so now as the student, I have all of these goals listed off to the side, but I can also navigate through it by clicking on the different parts of me. So if I click on my mouth, you can see this pops up, my eyes, and my water bottle. So I'm going to say nice words, I'm going to watch the teacher, and I am going to um, drink lots of water. And it's a lot of fun for the kids because all of these, it's like they like to try and see each other's goals and try and click and find where their goals are. Like, is there something here on this painting? No. So which goal goes with uh, which part of that student's picture? Um, it's a lot of fun. And they can share them with each other, too, or publish them to a Google site or add them to a Google, um, a Google document.
So that was a, a quick and easy way for kids to do some goal setting um, that's image based. And again, I've done this um, probably maybe the youngest is first grade, but with uh, graduate as old as graduate students, so you know, 30 year old students. So high school students as well are great for this. Um, and they have a lot of fun thinking about what they want to put in there. Um, yes, Wendy, students do need a Google account to do a Google drawing. Um, so if they don't have Google Apps accounts, this might not be the best activity for your kids. Uh, but I've also seen teachers create Google drawings with their own accounts and then share them out as um, interactive uh, goal setting for the whole class. They might take a picture of the classroom and create these little hidden clickable areas um, to help kids think about uh, what kinds of goals they might have around reading. And they click on the library and reading goals for the class comes up. Or math, they might click on the manipulatives area and see that come up. Um, so another thing to think about. OK, great. Um, let's just see if there's any other questions. Jennifer asked if you can um, hide comments until it's clicked. You can hide comments. I can click resolve and they go away. But when I resolve them and I click on them, they don't show up anymore. So they have to show up on the side. Another option is when you click on this, have it go to an external web page. So, um, so another option is I can create a Google Doc for each, um, for each goal or maybe a Google slideshow presentation to show how I'm going to meet the goal. So let's go ahead and create, let's do a slideshow presentation. So I might make a quick, uh, when I click new, instead of clicking um, drawings, I clicked Google Slides instead. And I'm going to go ahead and say, um, watch the teacher. Um, and I'll say goal number one. And then I can add more information, like why it's important to me um, and how I'm going to do it. And then I can link this entire presentation by taking this to that picture of my eye. So if I click on this little linky guy next to the comment guy, I can pop that in. And now it's totally invisible. There's nothing on the side. If I tap on the eye, it opens up to that presentation that tells me all about my goal um, of watching the teacher. So you can have kids work together even as a group. Maybe take a picture as a group and have them each make a little slide deck about all their different goals and then aggregate them together into one drawing or have the kids do it individually. Um, OK, great. So let's go ahead and move on. So that was Google Drawings. Just have a few left. The next one is having students interview each other. So having them communicate um, about who they are, talk about their summers, talk about their goals, introduce each other. This is especially great for freshmen or for kids who are coming from um, disparate places who don't know each other super well. And for this, I love apps like Powtoon for um, the computer. So for Chromebooks, MacBooks, Powtoon, and Puppet Pals for those of you who have iPads. So let's look at Puppet Pals really quickly first. I'm going to go ahead and um, bring my iPad up here. And I'm going to go ahead and open Puppet Pals. Puppet Pals is an amazing app. Um, it allows you to uh, basically make a puppet show. And you can cut out different, um, you can go ahead and cut out different uh, images or use characters. I'm going to click press to start, and I can use actors. So um, this is actually a picture of one of my students, Jalen, and he cut himself out for that. He cut out this picture of a brown bear from the internet, and then I'm also going to add this fairy godmother. I can add a green screen, um, but I'm going to put them in the desert. And then I, go, I can go ahead and hit record. Hello, my name is Jalen, and here today I am going to interview my new classmate, Brown Bear. Hello, Jalen, I'm Brown Bear, and I'm here to talk to you about what my goals are for the year. Oh, boys and girls, I hope that you make good choices. I will grant you a special wish. Okay, you get it. So I'm going to hit stop. I can save it, but just so that you guys can kind of see what it looks like, let's take a look. Hello, my name is Jalen, and here today I am going to interview my new classmate, Brown Bear. Hello, Jalen, I'm Brown Bear, and I'm here to talk to you about what my goals are for the year. Oh, boys and girls, I hope that you make good choices. I will grant you a special wish. All right, so hopefully you get it. That was Puppet Pals. There's other great apps that do similar things like Toontastic. Um, 
but kind of having them animate their um, introduction of another student is a lot of fun. So they might take the first 10 minutes to talk to another student, get to know them, find out what they're all about. And believe it or not, again, high school teachers, um, the high school students love this. For my uh, um, seniors and juniors, they've done this where they talk about where they're going to apply to college, what they're thinking about doing next year, like what kind of careers they're looking at, and they really geek up about it. So they create these little puppet pals or tunetastics and they introduce each other that way. For those of you who don't have iPads and you have laptops or Chromebooks, um, Powtoon is another uh, is a free service on the internet that doesn't do um, it doesn't quite do the puppets, but it does allow you to animate. Um, it allows you to animate um, all different sorts of um, characters. You can bring in pictures of yourself, um, and it is free to use um, to export it. Um, Short Powtoons are free, larger ones do cost money, but um, for the amount of things that you need to do for a quick introduction or interview of your colleague, it's totally fine. So that's another alternative if you're not on iPads. Um, Susan had a question about Google Drawing. She was asking about drawing with Drive on the iPad. Unfortunately, drawing doesn't work so well on an iPad yet. I hope it does soon, but um, parts of it do work. So taking a picture, adding things like that, that does, but the drawing tool doesn't work. Puppet Pals, that's a good question if it's free. It changes all the time. So let's quickly check to see what the current state of Puppet Pals are. And it looks like it's still free. Now, the way that it has been for a long time is the um, app itself is free. But then um, to buy like more characters, like Shakespeare here, William Shakespeare, or um, um, have extra tools, then you have to do in-app purchases. But the base app has been free for a long time. And I'm glad to see that it still is. All right, um, Sarah had to leave, but so sorry about um, um, tech issues. And um, Mary's asking about a handout. There's no handout, but um, what uh, you can do is uh, stay tuned. There will be an email following the webinar that's going to share all of the, um, the recordings of this entire webinar. So you can just go back and scan through and see what you missed. All right, so the last idea for a digital icebreaker is the time capsule. And again, normally teachers have their students write themselves letters to themselves and talk about, again, their goals and who they hope to be this year and then open them up at the end of the school year to see if they made um, that wish come true. And a great way to do this is to have kids create video self-testimonials. So this is something I haven't done yet, but I'm really excited to do this year, is to have my kids at the beginning of the year create an iMovie, which is an iPad, or a Wii video, which is um, on the desktop for uh, laptops or Chromebooks, where they use the built-in camera from their iPad or their laptop or their Chromebook to talk to themselves. And they write themselves a dear diary entry, but in video. And they talk about what they want to learn this year, all that sort of thing. And what they love, um, they love seeing themselves on camera. I've had kids talk to themselves and then look at it at the end of a unit, but never from beginning to end of year. And I think they're going to really like it, especially the younger kids, because they'll be able to see themselves grow. They'll see how much different they looked eight months ago. So um, creating these little video testimonials are um, a great way for kids to, to see their own growth and learning. And I did promise that we have another little mini bonus um, for you to take a look at. And that's the idea of having them do a home screen design studio. So on the first day or week or whenever you take your devices out, um, a lot of times you're spending a lot of time teaching the kids how to manage the device and how to know which device is theirs, where to put it, and what to do if they run out of power. What I like to do is allow my kids to design their own backdrop, especially if they have their own device. If they don't, um, then they can help design the number on the device. And the wallpaper or screensaver of the device is always either a picture of the student that they personalized or a number if they have a shared cart so they know which device is which. So for example, for my younger kids, I might give them an outline of um, an 11. If the student has iPad 11 or Chromebook 11, and then they spend that first day of school coloring it. So they might color in the numbers and then draw 11 circles, 11 squares, 11 hearts to show uh, their understanding of the quantity 11. So it's A, a math lesson, but it's also B, a, a quick way for them to create this design that they own. And then we make that the backdrop of their iPad or Chromebook or what have you. And that way they can always look back at it. 
I really like it when we can have our kids' faces and pictures on there as well. Um, it's a lot better than what my kids normally put on the, as the back screen or home screen of their devices. There's a lot of um, unsavory pop stars that may not be the best role model that end up on as the home screen of a lot of our computers at school. And so giving them a productive and positive way to personalize and design their background um, that's more than just right-clicking on an image of um, someone from the internet is a lot more powerful. So again, this is a very primary example, but for the older students, we might have them create a graphic organizer for goal setting. Um, I've also seen students do, especially in an iPad, um, something that's really cool. I Actually, the first time I saw this was an adult. I think it might have been Lisa Johnson um, I saw do this. But I've seen students doing this more often as well. And I'm just going to, oh, you know what, I'll pull up my iPad again, because it's easiest to do it on there. I've seen them go to drawing apps like, let's go ahead to explain everything. It's my favorite screencasting app. And they've created uh, beautiful uh, drawings that become the, um, not only the background of their iPad or Chromebook, but also are functional. So perhaps I have a drawing here. So I'll go ahead and do a little square like that. And then I can write math. And then I can kind of design it and have fun. Um, I might do another one over here where I'll put uh, reading. And then I can go ahead and design that guy and do something fun over here. And obviously, the kids are a lot more artistic than I am and would have a little bit more time. I'm going to go ahead and save this to my camera roll. And then when I come up to change the settings on my iPad and make this my background, and I didn't do it quite perfectly, but this will give you the general idea. I'm going to go to my wallpapers, and I'm going to choose a new wallpaper from my camera roll. I'm going to pick that new drawing. And I can, um, so I didn't do the best job with, um, with sizing it. But let's go ahead and just set it for now. But you can see that in the background now, I could have, if I'd done a better job with the drawing, um, I could have made it so that certain apps were in certain boxes. And so I think it would take a little trial and error. I haven't done it myself a ton, but you could see that if I make the drawing a little smaller and size it and work with it, I can do so that all of the um, apps in this top quadrant might be in one square and apps in the bottom quadrant might be in another, and I can move apps around so that they fit in the right areas for my wallpaper. So hopefully you got some new ideas here or recharge some of your old ones. Um, I'm so glad that you guys were able to join me today. I hope you had a great time. I'm just going to take these last few moments to take a look at any other questions that there are. Um, so I see um, Stacy asked about protecting uh, desktop backgrounds. Um, you can in some dashboards. There are some um, some some computer systems that allow you to do it, but it really depends on the device that you have. Um, iPads are one of the ones that don't really do that very well. Um, do most of these apps pr function properly on Android devices, i.e. cell phones? So um, Padlet does. I'm trying to think whichever the ones we went to. Google Drawing, unfortunately, has the same problems as iOS, so that doesn't work so well. Um, WeVideo works great. Would students be able to use their personal devices to work with Powtoon, Puppet Paws, or Google Drawings? Um, smartphones, mm, I iOS devices for a Puppet Pals, yes. Powtoon, I've never tried to do on a cell phone, so I couldn't say in drawings again it won't work so well. Um, Jennifer had a fabulous idea. Thank you for sharing, Jen. That's great. So she said, high school students take a picture of their schedule to use as the background or lock screen, especially at the start of the year. I've never heard that idea, and that's downright brilliant. Because as a high school student, I never knew where to go. So having my um, schedule as the lock screen picture so I could just press my on button and quickly see it is an incredible idea. Thank you so much for sharing. Love, love, love that. So friends, uh, we're just about at time, unless anyone else has any questions. Oh, wait. I need to scroll down. There's more. Um, let's see here. Um, using Padlet for high school, avoid bullying and bad language. So um, yeah, that does happen with any kind of uh, wall where you allow students to have access to um, write in um, their own thinking. There's 
inevitably going to be that one or two student who want to ruin it for everyone else and use poor language. Um, I don't let that stop me, though. I continue with um, the way I'm teaching. I continue with uh, what we're trying to provide for the kids. And when that happens, um, sadly, what we do is we work with that student to rethink their choices and give them an instructional consequence. We do not take the devices away because um, we're, we believe that the devices are integral to their learning and experience, and by taking it away, we're not reinforcing that idea. But we do respond to it the same way that if a kid said something nasty in class or wrote it um, on the wall. All right, so I think I've got all the questions as I can see them. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Hope you have a fabulous rest of your summer. And for those of you who are back to school, welcome back to school and have a great uh, year. Next week, we're going to be talking about project-based learning and some math and science ideas to recharge your classroom and get it a little bit more student-centered if it isn't already. And I have our great friend, Ben Kovacs, who's a sixth grade teacher here in Chicago Public Schools, who'll be joining me to talk about these ideas. So thanks again, and have a great, great rest of your year. Thank you so much, Jenny. We really appreciate it. Um, always an honor to have you on a webinar. Um, like, like we said uh, a couple times in the webinar, we are going to be sending out a recording of this to everyone. And we'll also include a link to the session for next week as well, in case you want to catch that. Um, so if you have any questions, though, for, for Jenny, um, or, or us, just feel free to email us at webinars at mheducation.com. And we'll funnel those over or try to answer them for you. Um, but Jenny, always a pleasure. Thanks again. And thank you, everyone, for joining us.